We'll bring him up here. He is our hero in just a minute. And uh, you know, the importance of the caucus is underlined by the fact that the different campaigns care enough to send these wonderful surrogates here to speak to you. I'm always pleased to welcome my colleague, Senator Kane, to District 1. And how about the incredible Laura Griffin? I'm with her, you know, I'm with her. And it's nice to see the press here, too. They're kind of getting over that East Coast bias and coming out here to see what's happening in the map. And I don't think it's just that 75 degree weather, either. I think it's because what we're doing is so important. But the most important thing is the fact that you are here because you're the ones who are going to make this caucus so successful. And we're going to say to the rest of the country, hey, look at Nevada. We are the face of America. Am I right about that?
determination of the President of the United States determines Iowa, 97% white, no diversity. Then you whip off to New Hampshire, which has no people, and no diversity. <laughs> state that's west of the Mississippi, where the population center is moving west, it's a state that is diverse, it's a state that is so important to electing a person who is not determined to be the main decision in Iowa or in New Hampshire. The conferences are important. We registered <clears throat> eight years ago <clears throat> tens of thousands of Democrats. <clears throat> You don't have to pre-register. You can go to your caucus, go there, get there about 11, 11.30 on Saturday, and register. You register right there. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, pre-register. We want to register a lot of Democrats on that day, because we can do that. I think it's also important to recognize that uh, this is so important to our country. Uh, what we have going on in America today, and I extend my sympathy as I've already done on a personal basis to Justice Scalia's family. He's a person who is, uh, uh, has nine children, lots of grandchildren. Uh, so I admire him very, very much. Uh, I didn't agree with a lot of his opinions, but that's okay. Uh, we now have a vacancy. And for all these people running for uh, president on the Republican ticket, they carry around, they boast about the Constitution. Well, they shouldn't read it because they, should, they would understand very quickly that President Obama was elected a second time not for three years, but for four years. And we should go ahead and have a, President Obama pick someone. We should have congressional hearings. We should have committee hearings. And we should move forward and have a debate on the Senate floor. We've done that so much. We've done it for Republican presidents. When we're in the majority, that's how we wound up with it. Supreme Court Justice, sorry, I didn't think they were that great. Uh, <laughs> Clarence Thomas, for example, uh, Justice Kennedy, and I can give you a few others. Uh, we held hearings, and we voted on this. Now, we could have filibustered Clarence Thomas as an example. We didn't do that. We got 53 votes. It takes 60 to break a filibuster. We didn't do that. It's only something the Republicans have invented that's obstructing everything. They've obstructed the legislative branch of government now for years, making it relatively ineffective, and now they want to change and make the judicial branch just as effective, ineffective with their obstructionism. So we can't allow that to happen. We have to move on, choose a democratic president, and uh, let the American people say what accrues and uh, hard to say it. Trump do it for our country. So, I'm grateful you're all here. Uh, Tim Kaine is an example of people who really sacrifice, uh, never knowing what that small sacrifice would make. But he was a student at Harvard Law, one of the great learning institutions of the country. He decided for spiritual reasons that he would take a year off. He went to Honduras, where he served as a missionary with the Jesuits. That's why he's so strange the way he does. So, America is made up of people just like Dolores, just like Tim, just like the nephew, Mr. Chavez, who I never had the chance to meet, I wish I had. But I feel every time I visit with Dolores, I feel that I have met vicariously. So let's get out and let's make this Saturday a really important Saturday for America. Thank you all very much.